This is the design of the Navy's latest frigate, which will be in service well into the 21st century. As a result of the war, it's a more heavily armed ship with a 4.5 inch gun and two different missile systems. Well, the initial design had no self-defense capability. It was built down to a very constrained cost. Way before the Falkland Islands, or it was decided that it would have to have some self-defense. And it has two missile systems in it. One for tackling incoming skimming, sea skimming missiles, a point defense missile system called the Seawolf. And one version of the Seawolf was, of course, used in the Falkland Islands in the Type 22s and it has a surface-to-surface -surface guided weapon system which can tackle surface targets some distance away and in this particular ship we have the Harpoon system. Harpoon is the American equivalent of Exocet for attacking surface ships. In front of it is the silo for a longer range version of Seawolf to be launched vertically. And as a direct result of the war the ship has a shore bombardment gun but this is also the Navy's first frigate designed to reduce its visibility to enemy radar. The technique is known as radar contouring. None of the surfaces is a true vertical, none of the angles an exact right angle. What will an incoming missile see of such a ship on radar? What it will see is a very much smaller radar reflection and it will see it in a less consistent manner. It will see, we hope, radar flashes, which could, of course, come from decoys or something of that sort. It won't be able to home in on a consistent thing it sees all the time. The missile manufacturers have also learned from the war. The latest Exocets have twice the range of those in the Falklands. And this is what the makers of Exocet have planned for the 1990s. It's a supersonic sea-skimming missile that can travel over 100 miles in around four minutes. It's called ANS. This missile is a uh, uh, high supersonic uh, speed missile uh, propelled with a ramjet. Uh, it will have a long range and it will be a um, highly intelligent uh, missile, uh, which uh, combining this intelligence and uh, this uh, high speed uh, will be capable of uh, overcoming the, um, uh, the new type of defenses uh, where the, the, uh, which will appear at the turn of the century. If we are uh, speaking of the present type of uh, countermeasures, uh, in other words, um, the um, uh, chops and uh, jamming uh, devices, uh, decoys, etc. And uh, e uh, if we speak of the uh, present type of uh, anti-missile missiles, which are originally anti-aircraft missiles, and uh, rapid-fire guns, uh, these uh, countermeasures of the of the present time, I would say, of the uh, 80s. Uh, broadly speaking, they will be absolutely inefficient against ANS. To combat the next generation of missiles, other manufacturers have been developing sophisticated countermeasures. In this test chamber is the first active decoy designed to be fired from a ship. The decoy is specifically intended to divert an incoming missile by transmitting confusing signals into its homing head, which is why the system is called SIREN. SIREN is the first one that transmits an active signal thoughtfully from off board the ship. This means that it does not suffer from the disadvantages of being installed on the ship and then acting as a homing beacon. We put the homing beacon off the ship so that it can only be beneficial to the ship. Once fired, the siren round deploys rapidly as a result of a short burning rocket. It deploys a parachute a few hundred yards away from the ship. 
it listens for the incoming missile and then its own active side of it provides the messages back to the missile to say that it has got a better target than the ship and it seduces the missile away from the ship and towards the decoy instead. But could it cope with this? It will be quite easy to make a salvo of uh, several missiles arrive at the same time, so uh, saturating the, the, the enemy defenses. And uh, this will uh, be uh, all the more easy as uh, the time of flight uh, will be uh, relatively uh, short. The manufacturers of the active decoy are undeterred. Each missile, or several missiles at the same time, can be dealt with by a single siren, each um, radar signal being dealt with one after another in very quick time, instantaneously to all intents and purposes. Much thought has gone into the design of the warships of the future. They will be fitted with sophisticated countermeasures. But will they survive in the age of the supersonic missile? In the aerospatial opinion, the uh, INS will be capable of keeping this, this lead of the offensive uh, weapon over the defensive weapons, uh, we think, for a long period of time, and uh, I think uh, well into the 21st century. The cost of testing the weapons and tactics used in the Falklands War was ultimately measured in human lives. Both sides felt that they fought for a just cause. The prospect of loss of life did not deter the combatants. We'd been born of a generation of fighter pilots in the fleet air arm who'd been engaged in many minor actions since World War II and we'd been benefiting from all their experience and practicing their art. We didn't want to practice all our lives without fighting, so we were excited, a bit apprehensive, of course, but very keen that uh, it should happen. Si hay alguna enseñanza respecto de la guerra de Malvinas, como la veo yo, proviene del hecho de saber que uh, En lo que hace a la aviación naval, hemos combatido contra ingleses que son verdaderos profesionales en el arte de hacer la guerra. Desde nuestro punto de vista, creo que los oficiales de la aviación naval que intervinieron también lo somos. Tal vez lo realmente lamentable de todo esto sea que nos hayamos tenido que medir en estas circunstancias. No le quepa la menor duda que si fuera necesario volveríamos a hacerlo.